Hello, hello, Mordimers here and welcome back to Clutch Chess International 2020 tournament organized by San Luis Chess Club and today I would like to show you the game between Fabiano Caruana who is number two in the world in the classical time format. However, this is a rapid tournament. So Fabiano Caruana is number 11. His ranking is 2773 and in this game he's gonna play as black and his opponent Lenier Dominguez born in Cuba American player who is number six in the world in the rapid time control he's ranking 2786 and he's gonna play as white so without further ado let's see what happened in this game and at the end I will show you uh, also what happened in the other games and the current scores all the results of this round so we have e4 by Dominguez and then c6 by Fabiano Caruana. Uh, we haven't seen Caro Khan defense for a while. I think last time on my channel there were a couple of games from Tata still where, where Artemiev liked to play Caro Khan defense. We have d4, d5 and here uh, knight on d2, knight on c3 are possible. Of course exchange variation this is also possible. Even f3 is possible. However, the most popular way to play it is advanced variation e5. Very similar to a French advance. Uh, however, there are a couple of differences. The first difference is the bishop can go to f5. So it's not stacked on c8. So this is a good for Karo Khan. However, the problem is after playing e6, uh, c5 has to be played, uh, you know, of, against this pawn chain. Uh, and that means black gonna make, you know, two moves with the, with the black. So that's definitely one tempo down. However, uh, this is how Karo Khan is. We have h4 and according to the modern theory, this is the, the best for white at this moment. We have h5 answer, not only blocking h4, but also creating a very nice outpost on f5. The knight can jump to f5 in the future uh, and cannot be attacked with, for example, attack of, on g4. So this is the, you know, some deeper idea. But there is also some problem with this move because h7 uh, was protecting g6. Uh, and now g6 is slightly more weakened. So first bishop on d3 attacking the defender of, of, of g6 on this diagonal. Uh, we have bishop on d3 and now queen on d3. And as you see g6 is not so strong anymore. Now any moves like e6 are possible. So e6 is played by black. Uh, and now bishop g5 is the, is the most popular move uh, followed with the queen on b6. However we have knight on f3. Uh, and here we have a very, very critical moment of the game uh, because according to the theory, queen on a5 is playable, queen on a5 is playable. Even this plan knight on e7 uh, following with knight on f5, these are a good plans. However, Fabiano Caruana play, let's say the novelty, but actually this is a huge inaccuracy in the opening because he play bishop on e7. Bishop on e7, the idea probably is, you know, to prevent any moves uh, like bishop on g5. Uh, so that's the idea. However, the knight cannot jump to e7 and, and you know, naturally develop to f5. It can go through h6, but then it can be also taken with the bishop. So as you see, not really great move bishop on e7, but it's still not easy to, you know, exploit that. Uh, but Lenier Dominguez did that. And he play c4, very natural move uh, in the spirit of this opening. D takes on c4, queen takes on c4, knight on d7, and now important move, queen on c2. Queen on c2. Uh, it's actually the move against c5. Can you see that? Maybe not, uh, because after c5, which was played by uh, by Caruana, as I said before, knight on h6 with this plan uh, could be met with just bishop on h6 and there are no uh, knights on f5 anymore, okay? Uh, for example, this way and white are totally fine. Black have to be careful with the king. King probably gonna stay in the center. Uh, and this can be problematic. However, c5 was played by Caruana, also very natural move. And now the storm is coming. Uh, the most aggressive way to continue is d5, d5. You see that already? Now, Fabiano Caruana told for a couple of minutes what to play. He was shocked with this move and uh, 
and of course d6 is coming so the only way he can react now is e takes on d5 uh, and now e6 the pawn is attacking the the knight uh, and the pawn on f7 so f takes on e6 and now queen g6 with check king f8 uh, and now queen e6 winning back one of the pawns and the king is in the troubles how to continue now uh, one of the ways uh, here Caruana make couple of moves very very fast so he calculated after d5 he calculated all of that he could play um, knight from g to f6 okay protecting d5 this could be played but after knight on g5 uh, there are some mating ideas okay so queen e8 it can be met you know with with queen on e8 uh, castle but definitely black don't want to play that position so instead of that uh, caruana went for bishop on f6 still keeping an eye on g5 uh, we have castle by Dominguez. He didn't bother to take the pawn as he can take it later. Uh, and the king is still in the center. So better to move it into the safety. We have castle, knight on e7 now defending the, the pawn on d5. And now knight on c3 attacking. And here is, is even more critical moment because now what black have to play. And this is like, like really last chance, maybe not, not to equalize uh, the position, but exchanging the queens would be good plan. So queen on c8 and now knight on e5 is coming, okay? So a rook on e1 would have to be played against that, uh, but still knight on b6, queen have to be moved to e2 uh, and black gonna have a little brief uh, you know to reorganize the game to solidify the position maybe give some pawn uh, uh, to make you know the position of the king much safer uh, it's not easy because because there are no pawns in the front of king but probably black could try to reorganize the position however we have rook on c8 and dominguez had the chance to to really crush his opponent with knight on b5 but he missed that he he thought for a couple of minutes but he missed that uh, what is knight on b5 knight on b5 uh, with the idea knight d6 okay controlling these two squares one is the mating square uh, so the queen cannot help so knight on g6 would have to be played made the space for the queen uh, and after rook on e1 let's say knight on b6 knight can take on a7 or can jump into uh, into the game here, queen on e7, and now just exchange the, the pieces, so queen on e7, knight e7, win the exchange, and the game is really, really comfortable for white, shouldn't have the problems to win being exchanged up. Also, uh, rook on c7 is actually the blunder, you cannot save that exchange because queen on e8, okay, and that's actually uh, a checkmate. So, uh, Knight on b5, missed by Dominguez, really strong move. However, he played knight on g5. Uh, slightly worse move, but still, you know, white stands better. And there are, of course, a mating idea on f7. So we have bishop on g5, bishop on g5, and now rook on c6, kicking the queen. Uh, so queen have to be moved. Where to move the queen? Uh, probably the best idea is to win back the pawn. This is what Dominguez did. So we have bishop on e7, queen on e7, removing, of course, defender of, uh, of d5, and only now queen on d5. Knight on f6, attacking the queen, and now queen retreat to f3, and the knight is pinned. Uh, and cannot move of course uh, king on f7 making a space for the rook so rook can enter the game uh, and now rook f on e1 now these rooks can actually you know come to the center like control all the center uh, rook on e6 is possible and actually is recommended by the engine uh, but Caruana probably didn't want to lose the pawn because after rook on e6 uh, of course queen on e6 if king then rook coming skewer the king win the queen uh, so queen on e6, queen b7 wins the pawn, okay? Uh, and if you don't want to lose another pawn, uh, the queen has to be exchanged. Uh, and white are being up the pawn. Uh, also, these pawns are disconnected, so very comfortable for position for white. So instead of that, we have queen on d7 avoiding the exchange knight on e4 now knight is going to this powerful outpost on g5 uh, as this knight is pinned so it cannot be attacked we have king on g6 and pinning and now knight g5 uh, and here 
rook d6 so white uh, cannot you know control uh, open d file however uh, they still have you know uh, e file to to maneuver we have queen on c3 by Lenier Dominguez and now the idea it looks like the idea should be queen on c2 uh, and this is pretty annoying as this knight is already controlling a lot of squares here the knight for now defending h7 uh, but if this rook is moved uh, black have to be careful about that knight uh if the rook can exchange the the knight that could be you know pretty dangerous uh but at the same time this queen just simply attacks the c5 pawn so rook on c8 have to be follow uh, and now rook e5 attacking the pawn again what to play now uh if black try to exchange um, the rooks, for example, rook on d1, uh, the problem is the king cannot move to h2 uh, because of this fork. So that would that that is the that is the one problem here. So rook on e1, and after queen on d5, queen c2 is coming. Okay, uh, queen f5 now defending and now. Uh, still winning the pawn one of the pawns have to fall uh, and of course again white gonna have much easier game so instead of that we have c4 by Fabiano Caruana which isn't that great move uh, because here Dominguez could play queen on c2 this would be the best move in the position here queen on c2 with the idea if rook on d3 uh, then just connect the rooks, double the rooks on the open file, and now what are, the, what are the threats? Rook on e7, this is the threat, okay, so queen have to be moved, then knight jump on e6, uh, and then this rook can attack on g7. And this is very serious threat. Also, uh, if the if the if the rook going, for example, to defend on g7, then this pawn is without the protection, and then this rook would hang. Okay, so that is the problem. So b5 first and now rook e7 attacking the queen. Now queen have to be moved. To, so for example, queen on uh, g4, uh, knight e6 as planned. And now yes, rook can defend. The problem is knight on c5 winning the exchange. So again, this way or another, white gonna win the exchange. And if this queen moves, for example, to f5, uh, which uh, would make sense, but it doesn't work uh, because after rook on e7, queen f5, uh, we're gonna have rook from the first rank to, to fifth. So the queen has to be moved. Uh, queen g4, of course, knight f3. Now rook on g5 is coming. This is completely disaster winning for white. Um, and now if queen on f4, let's say, then rook g7. This is also crashing. A uh, king cannot take the rook because of this fork. So all of this position, uh, as you see, uh, after c4, queen c2 would be would be really really powerful. However, we have rook a on e1 by Dominguez, so he connect the rooks, and now maybe queen on c2 can be played. We have rook on d3 uh, attacking the queen, and this was the chance. Look at the position. You see already the position. Dominguez could play queen on c2, and we have exactly the same position where black probably have to play b5. Uh, to defend the pawn uh, and all of this we already know I just show you all the lines however in this position we have queen on b4 the inaccuracy which now black could try to exploit with rook on d1 rook on d1 and white to win have to be very very precise uh the tricks like rook on e7 doesn't work anymore okay because after rook on e7 rook e1 okay and now uh, the rook has to retreat or queen on e1 can be met with rook on e8 okay you see that already you cannot take the queen because this queen is hanging with check and then the knight can take the rook and win the game so rook on e8 queen e8 and this is completely drawish drawish position so uh, rook e7 would not work uh, white would have to try something like queen on c3 queen on c2 uh, that would be much slower maybe it would work but black would definitely uh, manage to exchange um, the rook so uh, would be more difficult however uh, here Caruana didn't go for rook on d1 he played b6 now queen can move because it was defending b7 the problem is now we have rook on e7 by Dominguez queen on d6 uh, 
asking to exchange the queens, which of course is in favor of black, but Dominguez now figure out my queen should be on c2. This is so powerful to have the queen. So he play queen on a4 and it looks like he's attacking the pawn. So uh, Caruana play a5. Uh, he could try something like rook on c7, but it wouldn't help much. Uh, so he play a5 and now queen c2 as planned. So Dominguez is on right track right now. We have rook on c7 asking to exchange the rooks and of course white can do that. However, uh, Dominguez want to keep as many pieces on the board as possible as he is on the attacking side. So rook from the 7 rank to e6. We have queen on f4 and now g3 attacking the queen. Uh, the problem is queen can go to very nice f5 square. And now black has a threat. Black can actually take on g3 uh, and, you know, make a discover attack on the queen. That would be with check. So, of course, queen has to be moved. Queen on e2. And now rook c on d7. We have rook on b6 winning the pawn. And now rook on d8 protecting the, the last rank. So any moves like, you know, knight on e6 with the, with the attack on the knight would not be possible. Uh, we have knight on e6 anyway with the attack on the rook. So rook on d2 making some space for another rook uh, attacking the queen. Queen on e3. And here is the problem. This rook actually, if moved from the last rank, the knight can go, you know, to f8. This is a huge problem. However, black doesn't have much choice here. Uh, if they try, for example, attack the queen, still attacking the queen, the problem is after queen on f4, uh, black don't want to exchange the queens because again, losing the exchange, okay? Uh, but queen on d5 is even worse because now knight g7, knight g7 with the idea of attacking this knight and that would be a disaster. So rook f8 um, defending, but still knight e8 attacking this knight again uh, and it's pinned, okay? And the, and the knight is, is defended. So uh, black would probably want to exchange the queens, but now white don't need to agree. Queen on c4 winning yet another pawn uh, and now attacking this um, rook uh, and also this knight is attacked twice. Okay, you see that already. So it's overworking. Queen defends uh, on f6, but also defends on d3. So rook on f3, but it also doesn't help because rook f6, rook f6. Uh, and I hope you see that already. You have to take with the queen. Uh, so queen exchange for the for the rook. Uh, so white gonna win easily. Uh, if rook takes, then of course we have a checkmate here. So uh, definitely very difficult situation for black uh, and Fabiano Caruana has 41 seconds on his clock and Lanier Dominguez 19 seconds. Uh, he really thinks about every move, how to attack and he have to be quite precise at, as you know, Caruana still can uh, draw this game. However, unlikely, but still have chances here Caruana play uh, rook from the 8th rank to d6 and we have immediately knight on f8 with check, king on f7, rook b7 and the knight cannot be taken because if Caruana takes the knight we of course have a checkmate here. So not possible, this is why king on g8 was played uh, and now knight on e6, knight on e6 uh, attacking the, the pawn on g7, we have king on h8 also making some space maybe for the knight However, the problem is Caruana really have couple of seconds on the clock. Of course, he has incrementation, uh, but it's, you know, he has to ma make the moves. So it was not really the move for making a space for the knight, but probably just the, just the panic move. Uh, knight on g5 now and now king on g8 could prolong um, the game. Knight g8, maybe rook on f7. Uh, queen g6 and now rook f8 and here are some mating ideas already you know uh, take the take the knight and then queen can come to e8 followed by the rook and you know win the game so probably rook on d1 but it also doesn't help knight on f7 now uh, king h7 and again winning the exchange and uh, that's one of the way of winning that uh, King on g8. King on g8 was played by Caruana. We have rook on b8. However, however, 
uh, actually try to find much better move for white in this position. Uh, you can, you know, pause the video while I enjoy my cup of tea. So the best move in the position is actually queen on d2. Queen on d2, just winning the rook, okay? Simply winning the rook. And now rook uh, cannot take the queen because we're gonna have the checkmate. This knight covers f7 and h7. So that would be a checkmate. What black can do is just throw some pieces, but it's still a checkmate. Uh, also queen on c8 doesn't work because white gonna win yet another rook and the game two rooks up of course is enough uh this queen cannot take the rook because we're gonna have a checkmate anyway so uh this was the move this was the possibility queen on d7 uh, 15 seconds on the clock lanier dominguez played as i said rook on b8 uh, and it makes the things more complicated it's still winning uh but after rook on d8 he played queen on d2 Queen on d2, uh, rook on b8, and now how to win? It's still winning for white, uh, but you know it's it's more difficult now. Uh, we have queen on d6, we have rook on f8, uh, queen on d4. No couple of moves just to get you know some time to think of about the game, uh, and now Caruana play queen on c2. Uh, he could try queen on d3, uh, maybe just exchange the queens, but of course uh, white would refuse. Uh, however, we had the queen on c2 and now rook on e7. So white already got to the 7th rank and want to checkmate uh, on g7, maybe even uh, jump with the, with the knight and, and win the game. Uh, we have queen on b1, one check, a king on g2 and here uh, I will show you what's going on with this queen on d3. Uh, if white want to avoid, uh, then the pretty logical would be, for example, queen on a7, okay? Uh, attacking the pawn on g7, very nice counterplay. Uh, and also keeping an eye on f2. So just in case, if this knight somehow, you know, move, let's say, to e8, uh, defense g7, uh, then all the attacks on, on f2 would be, you know, counter with the queen. That's a, that's the pretty nice defender. An attacking piece as well, supporting, you know, g7. So, uh, queen on d5, and here is the problem. What to play as white? If you try king on g1, then uh, threefold repetition is possible, okay? Uh, and if you try, for example, knight on f3, uh, knight d7 would be very unpleasant, disconnecting the queen and the rook, so there are no threats on g7, but also look at this. There is, you know, another threat from black. So black would have some counter, a counterplay, and it's very easy to miss something. Uh, you know, you cannot take this knight now uh, because this is the problem. You would have to, you know, retreat with the queen and the game could continue. A lot of tactical issues, very complicated game. So Caruana definitely could go uh, for queen on d3. However, he played queen on f5, uh, also creating this battery, you know, attack not only on f3, but also on f2. Uh, the problem is this knight cannot be moved. Okay, it can be moved maybe to uh, knight to e8, but it's just too slow because now Dominguez play knight on e6 knight on e6 simply attacking the part of this battery so rook on e8 and after knight on g7 caruana resigned the game he resigned the game because his queen is under attack uh, and he cannot for example play queen on g6 trying to defend the rook because knight e8 knight e8 uh, and now queen c4, queen c4 wins yet another pawn, king f8, and here what white can do, uh, of course, is continue to play exchange up, but also can just, you know, uh, give up this exchange, uh, give it back, uh, and after queen on c5, white gonna win yet another pawn, so being four pawns up definitely is enough to win the game. So this is why Caruana resigned, uh, and he, if he try now, queen on d3 is just too late, uh, because simply queen d3 is fine. Now c takes on d3, uh, knight e8, and now d2, and yes, 
the rook cannot go to d7 because the knight controls d7 uh, so it's pretty scary moment however knight on f6 comes with check okay uh, and this pawn gonna fall uh, so that's also not helping so after knight on g7 fabiano caruana resign the game so this was game number one shocking result shocking game uh, and hyper aggressive you know attack against Karokan. very beautiful and very nice idea it's worth to know definitely you know if you play against Karokan. Uh, this is very very interesting idea all this you know with queen on c2 controlling this uh, light square uh, diagonal adds it's it's all good and worth to study uh, and I would like to show you the the quarterfinals other games what happen uh, as you see Lanier Dominguez uh, two and a half points he draw second game and in the third game uh, he just blunder in the draw each end game and he just blunder uh, and that was a pretty tough moment for him uh, because then he he lost also uh, another game than the clutch game and as you see Fabiano Caruana got the clutch bonus so at the end five and a half to two and a half uh, and the other pairing was very very bloody uh, Levon Aronian usually got the worst position against Alexander Grishuk somehow uh, Levon Aronian every time he just recovered and in the last clutch game uh, he managed to win so he also got the clutch bonus uh, in couple of games Alexander Grishuk w really had uh, in one game he sacrificed the rook for the for the attack but Levon Aronian just managed to draw that game and then in the in the clutch game he won uh, and it was 3 a.m. for him uh, but but he still you know played really really great chess so now we're gonna see another games between Magnus Carlsen and Jeffrey Schonk uh, decisive games and last two clutch games gonna be awarded with three points so everything can happen and also Maxim Vasil Lagrave gonna play against Wesley so so stay tuned and if you like this video Video, press like if for some reason you don't like it press unlike and leave the comment how do you like this format you know of the of the tournament I'm very interested and if you don't want to miss any other quality games from that tournament and others press subscribe smash the bell button thanks for watching and see you in the next one